cars are expensive. Last month, the average price paid for a new vehicle in the US sat at about 48,275 US dollars. And while there are cars available for far less, if you're looking for a new car right now, that's the peak of the bell curve that most of us fall under. Unless, of course, you're buying a new EV. Because historically, EVs have been more expensive than internal combustion engine vehicles. According to Edmunds.com, in January, the average new selling price of an electric vehicle in the US was just shy of 60,000 US dollars. And while that figure doesn't take into account national and local incentives, it's still significantly higher than the average price for a new car. Add in parts supply constraints that still exist more than three years after COVID hit automotive industry parts, a high competition among rival companies to secure themselves a supply of raw materials for the lithium ion batteries that every modern EV uses. And the prices of EVs are still way too high for the majority. So we had an idea. What if instead of buying a brand new electric car, you could buy a used electric car or perhaps keep your existing higher mileage one and add features to it that would bring it in line with those new models. I guess I should start this video by acknowledging a few things. This project began nearly a year ago and some of the video we filmed for this series dates back to August, September last year. The reason that we've held off on making this series to date is because of a delay in finding the required parts we needed for one particular portion of this project. I'll let you know more on that when we come to it, but today I want to give you a bit of an overview. And yes, while we've sort of made a video and an allusion to this project before on the channel, I wanted to start again from the very beginning with a slightly better filmed video that we can put online as the official start to the project. This right here is Orion, my wife's 2017 Chevrolet Bolt EV. It was purchased used in late 2019 after my wife's previous electric vehicle, a 2013 Nissan Leaf, was struggling to make the 60-ish mile round trip between her office in downtown Portland, Oregon, and our home here in the foothills of the Coast Range, west of Portland. Basically, while her Nissan Leaf was capable of making the round trip on a single charge, when the weather was cold, my wife had to choose between stopping to recharge, which took a substantial part out of her evening, or getting home cold. So we decided to head to Platt Auto on the southeast side of Portland. They're based in Milwaukee for those interested. And we picked up Orion. Since we already owned a 2017 Chevrolet Bolt EV, my old red Bolt LT known as Artemis, we knew that we liked the Bolt and we knew that it was a decent car. So we didn't have to worry too much about doing any test drives. Instead, we found this, the highest mileage bolt on the lot. I think it had about 85,000 miles on the clock when we purchased it. It also had the lowest sticker price. We haggled and we had a deal. I think from memory, we paid about $18,000 after our trade-in value and Orion was immediately placed into service, carrying my wife and teenage daughter to the Midwest to spend the holidays with family there was nary a problem on that long, snowy, multi-day trip. Since then, Orion has rolled over 100,000 miles. We're currently, I think, at about 114,000 miles. And of course, last year, Orion got a brand new 66 kilowatt hour battery pack replacement under Chevrolet's battery recall program, because, you know, the original battery packs had the possibility of catching fire. This has not only left us with a brand new battery with a new eight year, 100,000 mile warranty, but it's also left us with a car that mechanically at least felt pretty much like new, were it not for the large amount of dog hair and road muck on the car. And it was then that we started to hatch a plan. 
Our Bolt, by the time it got to August last year, had less than $8,000 left on its loan. We had just purchased our F-150 Lightning and money was a little tight, but my wife wanted that new car feel. So instead of trading the Bolt in and using it as a sizable down payment on a new vehicle, we wondered how easy it would be to take the money that would traditionally go towards a down payment and instead use it to revamp and fix Orion up a little. And this project was born. Our first step was to take Orion to Fresh Start Detail Co. in Beaverton, Oregon, who not only did a great job carrying out a professional detail to get the inside and outside of Orion looking almost new, in fact, I would say better than new, but added a layer of ceramic coating as well. We paid full price for that, just under $1,000, and the car did look brand new at that point. I should also note that since we made that video with Fresh Start Detail, which hasn't gone public yet, the company has also started to do paint protection film, but didn't when we were there last year filming. Ceramic coating, for those who don't know, effectively adds a hardened layer on top of the clear coat of paint, which protects the finish and allows the car to last for a lot longer. It also is more environmentally friendly in the long term, as you can wash the car with less harsh chemicals than you would if you had a non-ceramic coated vehicle. Right now, Orion is looking a little mucky. You'll see it on the windscreen there. But our next video in the series will be an interview we filmed last year at Fresh Start. And alongside that, we will play a time lapse of me cleaning the car to show you how easy it is to clean a ceramic coated car and bring it back to full health. I've cleaned the ceramic coating here and you can see it's nice and shiny and the paint is really smooth. The rest has not been cleaned at this point, but having ceramic coated both this car and our truck, I am a complete convert. After talking things through with my wife, there were a few features that we wanted the car to have that our truck had. In particular, she had lots of features that she enjoyed about the truck that she wished this car could add. At the top of that list was wireless CarPlay and Android Auto, then wireless Qi charging, and finally some kind of level two semi-autonomous driver assistance feature. The first one is easy, of course. It's possible to add a wireless CarPlay or Android Auto system to most vehicles. And we opt to try this. This is a CarLink 4. It plugs directly into the USB port on our car's infotainment system and basically pretends to be an attached iPhone or Android Auto while simultaneously pretending to be a wireless CarPlay system for your phone to connect to. My wife has been using this one for nearly a year now in this car and we both love it. Wireless charging is a little harder though, but because this is a Bolt EV Premier, the top spec Bolt as it came off the production line, it did come with a wireless charging dock for a mobile phone. Sadly though, when it rolled off the production line, the standard for wireless charging hadn't quite been set and the car doesn't conform to what has become the wireless charging standard, Qi charging. Later model year Bolt EVs do have compatible charging electronics, but with a little Googling and a little eBaying, I was able to pick up this. This is a replacement unit that with a slight modification to the plug on the car's harness, will work in the Bolt EV as if this was stock. This is basically a later GM wireless charging module that I got off eBay and will work just fine. We're going to do a little video covering that as part of this series, as well as a video detailing the screen replacement that we've got planned. That is because my wife, as many of you will know if you watch the channel, enjoys doing woodworking as a hobby and once or twice or several dozen times has carried long pieces of dimensional lumber in this car. On one occasion, a piece of two by scratched her touch screen and her trim. So we do have a replacement touch screen to install. Again, we got that off eBay. It does work. It's just got a nasty gash in it and we're gonna fix that in the future to make the car feel and look a little bit nicer. We will likely put the screen replacement and the wireless charging 
on the same video unless you'd like to see them as separate videos. So let us know in the comments below. Finally, the big one, which is unfortunately why this project has been held up nearly a year. Comma AI and Open Pilot now officially support 2022 and later model year Bolt EV and Bolt EUVs, but doesn't officially support early Bolt EVs. Because Open Pilot is open source though, and because the world of open source is really amazing, it is now possible with some third party hardware to add Open Pilot, or rather several different forks of Open Pilot optimized for early bolts to the car, all the way from a 2017 through to 2020 Bolt EV as long as they're Bolt EV premieres and they have the required packages, which is lane keep assist and I think one other package, you're good to go. Originally, we had planned on getting the required additional hardware that you need for that particular functionality from one very well-known member of the OPGM community, and we placed orders with them back in September last year. Sadly, for reasons I won't go into, those orders have yet to be fulfilled and the person offering those has said, hey, we'll give you refunds or, you know, if you're happy to wait, you can wait. We were able to find alternative sources for the parts we needed that not only were purchased last week, but arrived within a few days. So thank you, Tiny Bear Workshop. This is our pedal box, which is what you need to get this to work with Open Pilot. And that means that we have a full comma AI three based OPGM system ready to install, complete with a new SSD in this car, my wife's Chevrolet Bolt, just in time for her to return to work in a physical office back in Portland, rather than doing what she's been doing for the last three years and working from home. So yeah, again, there will be a video coming about that install, which leaves us where? So if we take into account the money that we've spent and put in thus far, which is just over about $1,000 for the detail and the ceramic coat, a few hundred for the eBay replacement parts. We also bought some rubber mats new from Chevy and just over $1,800 for the Comma 3 and associated hardware that you need to give this car semi-autonomous capabilities. What we hope we will have is a very clean, reliable Bolt EV with a almost brand new battery pack and warranty. We've probably done a couple of thousand miles on the new battery. Some added features that this car didn't have leaving the factory, the wireless CarPlay and Android Auto and the wireless Qi charging and fingers crossed, semi-autonomous capabilities. And that will hopefully even feature end-to-end autonomous driving or semi-autonomous driving with stoplight recognition and light control. We're talking Tesla FSD level functionality in a car that costs a lot less. So in about a year's time, we'll own this car outright, but we'll also own this car outright and hopefully still have a set of features in this car that you would associate with a car that's much, much newer. And by the end of the series, I hope we'll be able to tell you if this was worth it or if we just wasted a bunch of money trying to get our 2017 model year car to do things it was never meant to do and that are now considered must have features on any new car in 2023. Of course, we also have a car we know really well. We know it's in a good state of repair. Shortly after we purchased it, we had some suspension work done, so we know that's fine. We know it's capable of handling regular commutes. And while the rapid charging on the Bolt EV is known to be a bit of an Achilles heel, we have a longer range, faster charging vehicle right behind us, the truck, that we can use for those epic long distance road trips. So that is our re-energize Orion challenge. I hope you'll follow it and help prove that you don't need a new car to get that new car feeling. And on that note, we are done with today's video. If you have a comment, drop us polite notes in the comments below in our Discord chat room on Mastodon, or if you are a Patreon supporter, you can also leave a comment there. If you want more, subscribe, hit the bell and follow the link below to regularly support us with either a YouTube membership or a Patreon subscription. 
in which case you will get this video and others like it a day ahead of everybody else. You'll also find links below to our Kofi Bitcoin and Swag store, as well as that aforementioned Mastodon server. Scrolling on my right is a list of amazing charged up supporters and shout outs go out to our V2G Patreon supporters. They are Pedro Moura Pinheiro, Alan Tupper, Andrew Martin, Bennett Elder, Brophy Wolf, Chris Maxwell, Cyprian Laplace, Dan Blair, Gordon C., Hey Eska, John Tramal, Carl Fox, Mark Eggleton, Peter Dillinger, Ray Jean Fellows, Sean Tucker, Stefan Fremgen, Stephen Williams, Tazlet in the Gong, Paul Bricknell, Tony Moss, Kyle Hodgson, Chris Asentar, Denny Hind, Lance Schlal, Linda Irish, Mike Weeder, and Paul Nelson. And finally, big thanks to our off-grid supporters. They are Paul Conway, Kevin Burrowbridge, Stephen O'Donoghue, Jim Burness, Robert Flannery, Aaron Hahn, Ellery Hensley, Rory Litwin, J.P. Fegerback, Dave Kitchen, Andrew Glenn, Anonymous Freak, Chris and Michael Johnson, Clay Witt, CPU Freak 101, Eric Neck, Joe Bresney, Joe Hughes, John Henderson, Laura Reynolds, Marcel Ward, Matthew Drobnak, Nigel S., Reggie Watts, Will Graylin, and of course, Ian. Don't forget that we make videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday and Saturday on this channel. Plus, over on Sunday, we have our Sunday Musing and Chicken and Garden update, which are filmed right here next to my car. And with that, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you soon. Be kind and as always, keep evolving.